to show you how to download, install and test the ClientSight Proxy ISA Server plugin. You must be using ISA Server 2004 in conjunction with Active Directory to use this tool. To begin, log in to ClientNet. Now select the Configuration tab and Web Security Services Configuration. The download for the ISA plugin can be found in the Tools section under the Client Site Proxy link. There are two downloads available. Select the download for ISA Server. If you do not have an ISA Server, you should refer to the walkthrough for the standalone CSP. Select Save. And store the file in a convenient location. Note you need to either save the file directly to the ISA server or transfer it once it's been downloaded. Once the download has completed, close the file transfer dialog box. Minimize the browser and run the setup file you have downloaded. If you receive a security warning, select Run. The install shield will then open. Select Next to start the process. Firstly, you will need to read and accept the license agreement. Then Input your details and ensure that this application is installed for anyone who uses the computer. Next, select where you want to install the application. Note that Message Labs recommend accepting the standard path. Press Install to begin copying files. Once the installation has finished, you will be given the opportunity to review the README file. This file contains the instructions for configuring your ISA server. These instructions are also contained within your administration guide. Once you have reviewed the instructions, you will need to load the ISA server manager. To check that the installation worked correctly, select Add-ins from the left-hand menu and check that the client site proxy filter is showing in web filters. If it is not showing, refer to the administration guide for manual installation instructions. The first stage in configuring the ISA server is to create the firewall policy which allows authenticated users to access the web. Right click on the firewall policy item in the left hand menu. Then select import from the menu that appears. Navigate to the folder you chose for the installation of the ISA server client site proxy and select www firewall rule. Then press the import button. Once the firewall policy has been imported, make sure that it is at the top of the list. If it is not at the top of the list, right hand click the rule and select Move Up. The next stage is to configure authentication. Start by selecting Networks. Then select the internal network. Right hand click and select Properties. Select the Domains tab. If your internal domains are not shown, press the Add button. If they are already shown, move to the next step. Press Browse and select your internal domain. If you have multiple internal domains, Repeat this step for each one. 
Otherwise, select the Web Proxy tab. There are a number of ways of connecting clients to the ISA server, including using the firewall client and auto discovery. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are going to enable web proxy clients. You also need to confirm that users are being authenticated against the Active Directory. Press the authentication button and check to make sure that integrated authentication is enabled. Integrated authentication will cause the ISA server to check the identity of the user against the domain which it is a member of. Press Apply to confirm the settings. And then OK to exit. Now we need to set the ISA server to relay all outbound web requests to the Message Lab's web scanning service infrastructure. Select the Web Chaining tab and then highlight the last default rule. Right hand click and select Properties. Select the Action tab. Select the Redirecting them to a specified upstream server radio button. Then select Settings. In the server box, enter the name of the web scanning service proxy you have been provided with. Note there are regional proxies for the US, the EU, and for Asia Pac. When you have entered the location, make sure that the ports are set to 3128 as shown and uncheck the automatic poll option. Press OK and press Apply. Caching should be disabled for the Message Lab service to work effectively. If it is not disabled, content and files could be served to internal users without being scanned, bypassing the Message Lab's virus and URL filtering. Enter the properties for the last default rule. and then disable caching for both HTTP and FTP. If you have multiple caching rules, it is recommended that you disable them all. Once you have finished, press the Apply button. The changes to the ISA server are now completed. To test the service, access a web browser on a client PC. Enter the URL shown. If the CSP plugin is working correctly, you will see the following information. The via line will start with the name of the ISA server and will mention two netcache net proxies. This shows that the traffic is being successfully routed via the ISA server and Message Labs. If you do not see the host name of your ISA server, check your browser settings. If you do not see the netcaches, check your web chaining rule. You should also see X teacup and X saucer, which indicates that the username and IP address are being passed to Message Labs. If you do not see this information, check to make sure that the CSP plugin DLL is showing in web filters in the add in section. That concludes this session on the client site proxy. For further assistance, please seek out the support tab within ClientNet.